I've seen a lot of strange things when sailing. Some of them still haunt me. I spent nearly 18 years sailing. I loved it. I loved being on the ocean, the smell of the sea, the feel of the wind in my hair, and the sunsets were the stuff of legend. I spent time with the military, on fishing boats, and even doing security for cruise ships. Every experience was different in its own right. Security on a cruise ship was nothing like serving in the Navy, and military service was completely different from fishing. I had a lot of weird encounters in my time at sea. There's one though, one that has clawed its way into the depths of my psyche, one that taught me a crucial lesson. Don't bring your kids on a cruise. I was working security on a major line, one I won't name for soon to be obvious legal reasons. Our job was primarily to maintain order during concerts and in the bars, dealing with folks when they were belligerent. It wasn't glamorous, and it often ended up with at least one of us getting puked on, but I made good friends and usually had a pretty good time. Even got to see some private concerts that I otherwise never would have had the opportunity to. Then we had the incident with the kids. A mother had come to the security office and reported her kid was missing. She was distraught and babbling but what we were able to make out was that the kid was last seen near the pool. So we began our search there, and tore the ship apart from top to bottom. There was no sign of the missing child. We assured the mom we were doing everything in our power to try and find her kid. But we had nothing. There were no leads, no clues, no signs of the kid. The following day we had a report from another parent, stating that their child had vanished during the night. Again, we searched. We even investigated guest rooms. Again, nothing. We checked surveillance footage and saw no sign of anything weird in either incident. Both kids were last seen with their parents. That was when I first noticed something weird. The kids were seen leaving with their parents, but as we watched the footage to find anyone suspicious, we saw the same parent appearing from somewhere else. They would look around and begin to panic. Then they'd run in the same direction they'd gone with their kid only a few moments before. I had no clue what was happening, and when I asked the others, they were just as dumbfounded as I was. Kids kept disappearing, vanishing right under their parents' noses. We were up to ten reported lost kids, and we were no further in figuring out what the hell was happening. We questioned the parents, and showed them the footage, and they were just as lost as we were. None of it made sense. I was losing my mind over these lost kids, and I wasn't getting any closer to solving the problem. I spent the next few days poring over camera footage, looking for any sort of clue. Meanwhile, more kids were disappearing. We'd gotten to the point where we were advising parents to keep their kids in their rooms as we prepared to make an emergency port call and get real authorities involved. Then we got our first real break in the case. One of the lower deck workers had come to the office, complaining of strange smells in the boiler room. When we went to investigate, we found one of the deckhands, Javier, dead. His hands looked like they had been burned by some kind of chemical, and something had pierced his chest. As we continued our investigation of the boiler room, we found other strange things, like a slime that seemed to coat parts of the wall. With the body, we decided it was time to lock down the ship and find his killer. Javier's body was taken to the morgue, while the rest of us went to the armory and collected small arms. They were usually locked up and only distributed in case of major events like pirates, but we all felt it would be better if we weren't caught unaware by whatever it was that had killed the deckhand. We split into groups of four and began to sweep the floors, telling the passengers to stay in their rooms while we investigated the incident. That was when I saw him. Javier was at one of the rooms, gently rapping on the door and whispering something. I raised my weapon and called out to him, the deckhand can looked at me and raised his hands into the air. His face looked wet, like he had just gotten out of the pool, and his hair clung to his head. Hey, uh, what seems to be the issue, gentlemen? He asked nervously. Uh, the issue? I started, keeping the weapon trained on him. Is that you're in the fucking morgue? Who are you? Javier said nothing. His eyes seemed to grow wider. And as his hands slackened, I noticed they were too long. His forearms hung past his knees. His mouth seemed to droop until it looked more like a fish's. I fired. 
I shouldn't have. Not in an area with passengers. But I did. I don't know if I hit the thing that was Javier, but it dropped to all fours. Its arms and legs extended outward like a crab as it rapidly scurried away. We gave chase, pursuing the thing through the holes. I was amazed by how it moved, leaping onto ceilings and running along walls. We didn't dare fire at it again. It was like it knew just the right places to move to keep itself at a position of relative safety. Until it started heading down into the lower decks. We tailed the thing through engineering and maintenance rooms, following it as it ran until it burst through the boiler room door and we cornered it. By the time we had caught it, it looked nothing like Javier anymore. His face was bulbous, and its eyes were just a pair of inky black pools that seemed to take up over half its face. It panted with that fish-like mouth, revealing long, sharp fangs. Its hands and feet were webbed, and it seemed to secrete some kind of slime over its body that gave it a weird sheen. Six of us managed to catch up to this thing after we radioed it in. We kept our weapons trained on it, waiting for it to make a move. Its neck expanded like a frog's as it stared at us from its position in a corner, near the ceiling. There was nothing human about its appearance, but I felt like I could sense an air of fear coming off the thing. One of the other guards aimed his weapon at the thing, growling. This little freak probably killed all those kids. You saw how it looked like Javier. Maybe it doesn't need to kill someone to take their face. The creature's head tilted as it belched out a glob of clear slime toward him. I watched in horror as he covered his face, the slime splashing from his weapon directly into his eyes and onto the exposed skin of his head. He screamed almost immediately. The clear slime smoked and sizzled as it came into contact with it, burning into his flesh and melting his weapon. Within seconds, he was on the ground, convulsing. I redirected my gaze to the creature. It was still in the same spot, eyeing the rest of us warily as its neck began to expand again. I wasted no time. I took a shot at the thing's face. The bullet found its target, and the creature shrieked, a long and inhuman groan as it fell from the wall and onto the deck behind one of the boilers. A couple of us stayed to check on our comrade, but myself and another guard ran to find the thing and confirm the kill. It was gone. All that seemed to remain of it was a vaguely humanoid water stain and what looked like pieces of kelp. We searched everywhere, and there was no other sign of the creature. Our co-worker was taken to the infirmary but he ended up dying a few hours later. The doctor said it was severe chemical burns, and when I told him about the thing we saw, he just shook his head. Best talk to the captain, he murmured. When I explained the incident to him, his lips tightened and he sighed. We aren't going to find any of those kids, I'm afraid, he muttered. What makes you say that? I inquired. Mero don't leave bones. Mero, sir? He exhaled and stood. The sea's full of them. Normally, they aren't a big problem. We have insurance and payoffs for this kind of thing. Don't worry about it. W what kind of thing? Does this happen a lot? Not often. They're pretty frightened of us. Every now and again, one will get gutsy. They prefer to eat kids. I don't know why, so don't ask me. I only know there are far fewer reports of adults disappearing. My confusion only mounted. But what are they? Sea monsters? Mutants? They're marrow. You ever heard of mermaids? Sirens? I blinked. There was no way that thing I saw was a mermaid. Don't look like they do in the movies, do they? I wanted to argue with him, but nothing about that last hour made much sense to me. Like I said, put it out of your head and be glad you got out of it in one piece. I've seen more of them in my travels after that one, most of the time in the ocean itself. They watch us as we sail past them. Oftentimes, I wonder if they're gauging whether or not they could take us. I know what they can do, and I know there are worse things in the sea than the marrow. It's one of the reasons that, after 18 years, I won't go anywhere near the ocean. And that was I've Seen a Lot of Strange Things When Sailing, Some of Them Still Haunt Me, by OK Programmer 6938 so what I like about this is um, typically a lot of people's assumptions about mermaids is, is usually like really pleasant, like little mermaid and everything. They're all like good, good creatures. But like like a lot of creatures, whether it be through mythology or just creative thoughts and everything, um, there tends to be, you know, good versions and bad versions of, of the same thing. Right. Like, I mean, 
fairies is a fantastic example. There's good fairies, there's bad fairies, some of them call fae, et cetera, et cetera. Um, elves, you know, that's another good one. There's there's a variety of different kind of elves. So with mermaids, um, and in this case, marrow, if you if you ever Google marrow, what you'll tend to find is that they're a little bit more like monstrous looking like, and in some cases, yeah, like like in this one, they, they can kind of shape shift a little bit. But not like perfectly. They're not exactly like a, a like a mimic or like a doppelganger or you know a skinwalker. No, they're not exactly anything like that. They're just kind of like in this case eating people, which which is a thing that you do hear about in um in the myth the, the myth the, 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 the mythology aspect of um of sirens, mermaids, marrow and stuff that they 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 can eat people. It's just like a, it's just a thing, you know. It's 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 cool. It's creative. A lot of a lot of monsters eat eat people. There's nothing there's nothing new. But um, but you don't tend to hear much about Mero themselves. That I, I definitely would think of them more as like the the more monstrous versions of mermaids. Uh, and in some cases, especially through like um, Irish mythology, they tend to appear quite a fair bit as as Mero, more monstrous creatures. And um, there's like one or two cases even where they can walk, like they have proper legs and stuff, compared to just the typical typical like big floppy fish tail that we uh, that we're so used to seeing. No, very, very interesting. It's, it's definitely, I mean, I've definitely heard the word marrow like months or twice before, but it's definitely not something you hear an awful lot about. It's usually just mermaids or sirens. And, you know, then obviously the, um, when it comes to sirens, they're, they're more known about like, uh, they, 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 they're beautiful women out on these like rocks out at sea and that they're singing these beautiful songs which lull men to their deaths and like make them crash their ships and stuff. And then the sirens kill them and eat them and stuff. Not always eat them, but usually, usually they eat them. It also reminds me of like harpies, how um, you know, like the the, the beautiful flying women from a distance that yet again, that in some cases they sing, but they usually kind of screech more like, and that they'll they'll lull men into a false sense of security and then tend to, you know, kill them and stuff. It's 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 it's, it's same kind of same kind of concept. Really cool, really fun. Uh it's, uh, it's a nice little story. I really enjoyed this actually. It um, yeah, security on a cruise ship didn't didn't see that coming. I thought it was gonna be. Kind of like that shipping container story, or maybe some kind of fishing vessel. Security on a cruise ship, definitely, definitely a cool little. It had, it had a little bit of like a diehardy edge to it. It was nice. It was really good. Really, really enjoyable. I certainly enjoyed it. I sure hope you did too. This has been Nate at night. We'll uh, see you for whatever's next. Take care. Thank you so much to our Patreon members and YouTube members for making all this content possible. You know who you are. <laughs>